Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing great. This is my penultimate Halloween video. I cannot believe I'm saying that. Where is this year gone? Please, someone tell me. I'm not upset about it though because that means Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. Christmas. Okay, anyway, back to the video. I've been shopping. Someone needs to come and take my bank card because, oh my goodness me, in my defense, I needed it. I've bought some more black polyurethane, but I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> these I just wanted them I wanted them they are spectacular molds you have seen on my channel before I've shown you molds from Prima and Finnabare Finnabare are just next level elite molds and again I've purchased these from I Love Mixed Media here in the UK they're not so easily available here in the UK they are an American company so if you're watching from America don't worry about ordering from I Love Mixed Media here in the UK because you could probably walk into your local corner shop and find these. I actually don't know that for sure. But if you are watching from America, let me know where you get your Finna Bear molds from. First up, we have the Prima. This is a beauty. This is the Baroque Frames. Now, I know it's been mentioned in previous videos that um, Finna Bear molds are expensive and you are not wrong. I cannot deny it. They are not cheap molds. You're not going to find these on Wish. You're not going to get these next day on Amazon. These molds were approximately £16. And that is a lot of money for a mold. And I totally understand that. But look at this mold. <laughs> look at this mold. Look at it. Oh my God. To me, £16 is a lot of money for a mold. But it's also the kind of money that I would happily spend on a Chinese takeaway food. And that food's gone in 60 seconds. So I, 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 I do try to be logical about it sometimes. We've also got the skull and the bones. That is also the Finna Bear mold. They're just spectacular molds that have so many uses. We're going to do two things in this video. This is a big one. Put your feet up, grab a cup of tea. <laughs> We're going to make silicon inlays. Now, we already know that the Finna Bear molds can handle silicon rubber because I've made multiple silicon inlays. And we're also going to make polyurethane castings from each and every cavity of each mold that I've purchased. <laughs> now, I'm not necessarily going to use every silicon inlay and every casting that I make in today's video but they'll be there then. We've got them for future use. We've got them for future projects. You can make all of your castings literally within 30 minutes and then put them to one side for the future. This is the black polyurethane resin. Now, if you are new to my channel or just recently, you know, new to polyurethane, again, this is the fast set. This is not epoxy resin at all. This is poly resin. And this is a two-part system part a part b measurable by weight you have and i quote 30 seconds 30 seconds to mix part a and b together and then pour 30 seconds it's not for the faint-hearted but you got this guys <laughs> you've got this it sets within 10 minutes demold within 30 minutes so again it's a thick, it is a thick, fast paced polyurethane. Now, if you saw my recent video, I used the Let's Resin polyurethane, or am I giving something away? I think I've just given something away. Mm hmm. Anyway, <laughs> in Monday's video, <laughs> God, I'm useless, absolutely useless. Why do you watch me? In Monday's video, I'm going to be using the Let's Resin polyurethane. Now, the Let's Resin polyurethane fully, fully, fully cures and demoldable within 10 minutes, cures and demolds in 10 minutes. This stuff is not so fast, it's not so fast. You've got 30 seconds to mix it, around about a minute to pour it, and after around about two and a half minutes, it's gone, it's too late, it's too late. But it's still around 20 to 30 minutes before you can demold it, because it does say stay soft for quite a while. Anyway, back to the video. I just thought I'd share my little bit of knowledge and give you a spoiler for Monday's video. Um, we are on the skull and the bone. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I love the skulls. Like, love them. They're right up my street. Really a bit of me. 
The bones, no, they're not. They're not me. They're, I don't know what I would do with bones. Um, although there's a good, I'm already thinking I could make silicon inlays and use them like the skull and crossbone, like the pirate flag kind of, but that is it. Like literally that is it. What else would I do with bones? That's a question, an actual question. So let me know in the comment section. But what do I do with the bones? Um, <laughs> Finna Bear, if I could get Finna Bear on speed dial, I would literally be like, please just make a skull mold. I want this mold, just skulls. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over and out. <laughs> would Finna Bear reply? Probably not. <laughs> anyway, here I am using the black polyurethane. I decided at this point that, um, I'd make a mess. I, I really didn't, guys. It just it just so happened that I was making a mess. I did end up scraping the majority of this off into the bones. And that is the only reason, I'll be honest, the only reason I decided to fill up this mould completely and make some bones. So I made up another batch of polyurethane and I filled pretty much 99% of the cavities in this mould. And stop it now. Look at this. Guys, just look at this. Again, I know the mould is expensive. It's a Chinese takeout. That's how I see things. That is how I see things. Honestly, it's just so pretty. It is so pretty. Again, this is the Baroque frames. They are stunning. Absolutely stunning. And the multi-purpose use, like, look at like I can't keep saying look at this because that's what you're doing it's like I'm looking Claire I'm looking beautiful beautiful frames now the beauty of using the black polyurethane is that they're already Halloween they are ready they are ready they just need cobwebs or they need mirror behind them or they need some wax on them to bring them to life they're already Halloween but of course you could use pink you know you could use pink you could create a beautiful, beautiful Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, Valentine's Day. You could put photographs in resin, give them a beautiful frame. Come on, guys. The choice, the choice when you've got a mould like this, it's limitless, absolutely limitless. But yeah, that is all I'm saying. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. I just love them so much. The skulls are, again, my favourite, right up my street love a skull I absolutely love a skull especially obviously at Halloween but we do have them up all year round in our living room you would have seen that if you follow my home channel I've shown you a little bit of the decor on the shelf in my living room um but yeah they're just totally me now I did overspill on the eyes and I overspilled around the jawline so I'm just using my craft blade to just get in there get in there nice and early you can carve them out real easy there's nothing I don't like about these skulls. The frames and the skulls together, they're just me. They are absolutely me. The bones, on the other hand, nah, not me. I only filled them up just to use the poly. I mean, don't get me wrong. They are, like, anatomically correct. Anatomically? Is that even a word? They are correct. They're really detailed. They've got all the veins and blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> anyway, this mould amazing love it super cute the cauldron is the most beautifully detailed cauldron and this cat like you can literally see this cat can't you in hocus pocus or harry potter that kind of like wow <laughs> that's exactly what i hear when i see this Wah! like the whole tail has just been electrocuted or not electrocuted oh claire that's cruel not electrocuted but you know what i mean now at this point the polyurethane was thickening up so i do have some kind of air bubbles right at the tips which is annoying but even the witch's hat is adorable guys look at this it's just screaming screaming gothic halloween gothic we are not going to stop there though we're carrying on now i am using some of the embellishment wax that i got from i love mixed media again this was um purchased but this one was sent to me so the silver one i purchased myself and the purple one denise actually threw into the package after i placed this order so again thank you so much to denise for your support and uh, guys if you want anything from i love mixed media denise has it all I'm not even kidding. 
the link and the code is in the description box below. So I'm just putting a small amount of this embellishing wax on my gloved hand. The stuff smells so good. I can't even explain. It is just the nicest, nicest smell. It's like the dolls if you ever had a doll when you were a child that plasticky rubber but it smelled sweet like a tiny tears doll did anyone here have a tiny tears that's what it smells like that's what this stuff smells like it is nostalgic it is beautiful anyway back to the video Claire I'm just highlighting I'm rubbing the embellishing wax over all of the highest areas just to give them that hint and give them an embellishment and look how cool they look with just a hint of the embellishment I did start to add the purple I think the purple would definitely look better on other colors um for me right now where I am and what I want to do next the the silver was the way forward the silver was the way forward so I just got rid of whatever was left on my gloves and I just picked up a few pieces and gave them a little bit of a rub just a gentle rub you don't want to too much of a rub the gentle rub really just highlights the areas you want to highlight if you rub too hard you've covered your whole entire piece and it's now a silver skull so just again go easy next up we are making silicon inlays we are using the silicon rubber from let's resin i am a silicon rubber ambassador and because this is the first time i'm making inlays in these brand new molds i am going to use my silicon release spray um there's definitely a difference and i think it would definitely help and it would prolong the life of your mold i'm also going to color the silicon using orange mica powder and the silicon rubber itself is measurable by weight, one to one, and just stir for five minutes, making sure that they are both fully mixed, both components are fully mixed. Now, when you pour your silicon, you do need to pour from real high up. I'm around two to three feet off the desk. That is so that when the silicon actually hits, it's gonna blow out its own bubbles. It's really gonna help release bubbles. If you pour close up, it really doesn't get a chance. This way it's almost knocking itself out if that makes any sense. But it also means that mm, precision, <laughs> I mean, you guys know I'm messy anyway, but my precision is not great. And when you've got to pour from real high up, you lack control, you lose elements of control in the pour. So you can see it just going from getting, going from kind of half neat to half messy and then totally lost the plot. <laughs> Lost the plot is going everywhere, like actually going everywhere. I decided at this point we'll just do the whole lollipop stick um, scrape. So all I'm doing here is I'm filling the mold on the right hand side completely. And then I'm just going to scrape it over with my lollipop stick because it does get to the point where once you've spilled out and over, you kind of give up. At least I do. I... Ugh. Yeah, I was already over it at this point. So I'm just using a, I'm not even using a lollipop stick, go me. I'm using a piece of acrylic that <laughs> I actually had cut for me to do some clay work. So Moray, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I do clean it though. I've still got it and it's clean now. This is the next day. Um, This silicon does cure in about six to eight hours, but I do leave it overnight, generally when I first make my inlays. And the trick is to pull them out slowly, like super slowly, and look at the details. Just look at the details. Again, I did fill up the bones. I don't really want to use the bones, but I did fill them up just so that I've done it. And if you bend the mold slightly, like gently bend it, then that really helps you kind of get that first grip in with the inlay before you peel it out. Again, here are the bones. Really, really detailed bones. I'm just not a bone. I'm not I'm not a lover. Not a lover. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section if they are more your aesthetic. But guys, the frames, the frames are next level stunning. Absolutely stunning. And I guess what I'm trying to say is when you buy a mold like this that does cost a bit more money, you're getting a lot more for your money than if you were to buy a mold that I have done and I will do in the future for £1.99 from Wish uh, that doesn't have much in it. There's not, you know, there's nothing to write home about. But molds like this, you really get a lot for your money and you can do a lot with it. Um, I'm not working on commission here, guys. <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing a Julia Roberts, I promise. Um, but how cool 
does all of this look? How cool does it look? I honestly am looking forward to the future. I'm looking forward to the next year or two years where I can truly build up my Finnebear collection to try and get the most out of the most beautiful molds. Okay, now it's time to uh, use the stuff that we've just spent time making. I am going to be using this incredible tray mold. You would have seen this not long ago in my autumn videos where I put leaves, dried leaves, with that gold floating pigment. It was absolutely beautiful, reminded me of a Greek goddess. Um, this is the same mold from Moles and Shapes. Your discount code will be down below for Moles and Shapes. And I'm going to be using the Crystal Clear 20 Hour Cure Apex resin so I've mixed it up measurable by volume this one not weight volume I've used my calibrated cup to get exactly the same amount of part a part b and I have mixed for five minutes until it is completely crystal clear now I'm not gonna lie guys <laughs> this was hard for me I sat and I stared at my inlays and I stared at my polyurethane castings and I'm like, what do I do now? Sometimes when a restaurant has a huge menu, it's hard to make a choice. But when you've only got five or six options, it's easier. I couldn't decide. I, I didn't know. Do I put do I put the casting in? But it's too deep. It's too deep for the mould. But it's not. It's kind of level with the mould. But will it be level with the mould when it's fully cured? That would be a risk. Or do I put the inlay in? Which once I peel it out won't be level with the mould. So I know I'll have room to play. I am telling you the decisions were hard for me. Do I use both? Because we've made both. We've We've made polyurethane castings and we've made silicon inlays. So do I use both or do I just use inlays? And I went with just inlays. <laughs> I went with just inlays. Listen, all of those castings will be used. Those castings are now in a bag. They are solid as a rock. They're in a bag and they will be kept for future videos. I've put them into my Halloween box and they will come out again. At this point, do I add to the edges? Do I leave the edges? Do I add the mini skulls? Do, what do I do? This is when I really need someone with me. Like, what do I do now? This is what I decided on. Simple. Real simple. Don't go, don't go too far, Claire. You know, walk away. Walk away. Because it's so easy for me. I mean, I do love a chuck it all in video. But it is so easy for me to chuck things in that just don't go I like symmetry sometimes at least I like symmetry and putting two different shaped two different size of skull in here my brain couldn't handle it wasn't an option so in an ideal world I would have made even more silicon inlays and then I would have had two of the same so that's where my brain thought processes were going and if you can relate then great <laughs> you understand me I like people watching me who understand me um now we're going for the polyurethane technique you would have seen this on my channel multiple times it started as the cling film technique but I can't get on with cling film at all for me cling film just doesn't do it it, it gets stuck in the resin it's an ag it's pure ag to pull out this is polyurethane really really cheap from the pound shop um and yeah, I've just laid it over the resin gently and slowly to try and reduce air bubbles. I'm always going to get air bubbles. I've decided to accept that. Um, and then just gently, slowly, but surely, gently allow that resin to take the polyurethane and kind of pinch it. We're not pinching, pinching. We're just pinching. We're not pinching tight because then you'll lose the polyurethane. It'll get trapped inside the cured res resin. And then we're just delicately poking, prodding and pinching so that we get a nice rippled effect. Now I am filming late at night here. Let me know if it's okay for you, if the light is okay. I've pulled up the polyurethane. You can see it came away like an absolute dream. And you will only know the struggles if you've tried this technique with cling film. Now like every cling film technique and poly technique, it does tend to push the resin up and over the edges of your mold so there is a cleanup to be had I don't you know take you through the whole thing with me because it was long but some of that resin did go 
up and over my silicon inlays, which I did expect because I've put the polyurethane in there, which is pushing the resin over my inlays. Now, sadly, at this point, that meant that I did lose part of the jawbone of my skull inlay. That would not have happened if I did not go and use the poly over the top. But again, I hope this lighting is okay for you. I have my, my torch on my phone and yeah, filming at night is really hard for me. I've never quite quite found the right lighting but here you see me this was much more of a struggle than the skull I had to use my craft blade to try and get in under those bits of resin that have gone over the inlay again totally worth it guys totally worth it I am not complaining I knew this was a risk I knew this would happen um it's just a case of persevering and getting all of that resin off from on top of the inlay doesn't it look like a pool of water right now that you could just dive into so so pretty um again this is be safe with your craft blade be very very safe molds and shapes if you're watching i promise <laughs> i promise i was being careful the blade i was not allowing the blade to touch the silicon i did my best to try and get rid of any bits of resin that were out and over the edge now it is time for the colors and guess what i'm using I am using <laughs> chameleon powders, believe it or not. I know it's been a while. Believe it or not, <laughs> chameleon powders from Let's Resin, all linked below with your discount code if you fancy getting your hands on those. I figured the frame would be amazing in gold. Could you just make a gold casting of a frame and put it in? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, you could. But using inlays gives a completely different effect. It truly does. Now, the skull itself is magenta. I'm using the magenta. I thought that would be a nice color. Now, I already have a regret on this, and I will tell you all about that at the end of the video. But I am using magenta in the center. And then for the rest of the tray, I am using my favorite color of all time with the chameleon powders and seeing as this is the penultimate halloween video we're going to go in with the plum this is the plum chameleon powder by let's resin it is everything it is halloween witchy everything it's everything <laughs> i'm just rubbing it over the rest of the resin now this is sped up for you don't think i'm doing this like this fast in real time this is sped up because it is a process making sure that that chameleon powder gets down into every single little nook and cranny that has been created by the polyurethane and to back coat you can use epoxy resin or for speed which is what i am doing right now because i felt like i'd already been working on this video for about four days i am using the black polyurethane again i bought this from denise over at i love mixed media she did just get new stock in so i am going to leave her link below of course with your discount code and I've mixed up the polyurethane you do need to work fast sometimes making big batches of this is a kind of scary prospect but if you know that it's just one pour then you can just go for it work fast act fast pour fast take a deep breath walk away and that is it 30 minutes later it is time to demold now this is still filming at night but I am going to show it to you in daylight as well so you can see the difference and are you ready oh my gosh obsessed this is the exact result i was expecting um because i've done this many many times i'm just majorly happy like crazy crazy happy with it would i change anything yes i would change it so that the eyes in the skull are black I would actually not put powder in the eyes of the skull just to make it a little bit more skull-like and a little bit more spooky. This is the next day. The other thing I might have done differently, would I? Don't know. I might have colored the rim of the tray. So put a different color in the rim of the tray or even some gems or stones or crystals of some kind, some rocks of some kind, just to make the edge kind of... I don't know I do I I don't know who knows right guys because I don't know what past Claire was thinking and to be honest it might actually take away from the center so would I do that I'm not sure the other thing I might change if I did this again in the future is to make the skull and the the area directly behind the skull the same color because that then might make it look like the skull is pushing out through the fabric because it does look quilted it looks like a quilted layer of fabric and satin sheets 
If the skull and directly behind the skull was the same colour, it might even look way more spooky. But I 100%, 100% would keep the eyes of the skull black. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you would do if you were going to create something like this. And let me know if you have any Finnebear moulds that I need. Capital N, need. I have loved this one so much. This is a long one. So I hope you had your cup already and I hope you had snacks and I hope um, some of you are still with me at least and I haven't sent you to sleep. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you feel inspired. If you've been with me in the live chat, thank you so, 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 so much. Even though I'm not with you right now because I'm in Edinburgh, probably getting wet by the state of the weather. We haven't even left yet and I'm already dreading the potential weather up there. But I am currently in Edinburgh for Halloween. I hope you've enjoyed this this even with my absence and thank you to my moderators who've been probably not even keeping things under control let's be honest you all have a party when I'm not here so I'm sorry I will be returning <laughs> sorry to disappoint I will see you in the next video bye